Hey guys, Drews here. I am here with a new video for you guys today. Today we are sitting down as always to discuss what I read in the month of March. My March wrap up 2021. March was kind of a weird slash mediocre month for me. Um, I read, I want to say 12 books it was. Let me grab my bullet journal that I sit down on the ground here. Um, this month I read 13 books technically 12 because I finished one books on uh, the last day of March but didn't realize it was past midnight so technically it can be in my April wrap up too but I'll discuss that when we get there. So I read 12 books this month. Um, let's just jump into my wrap up. I'm going to give you my reading, my star stats and my page count and my smallest book and my biggest book of the month. Um, I had, an, like I said, it was a mediocre mark month for me. Um, so yeah. Without further ado, let's jump into our March 2021 wrap-up. Um, for the star ratings, I had zero one stars, zero two stars, four three stars, five four stars, four five stars. Ten of these were audiobooks, tw two of these were ARCs, three were buddy reads, one was a completed series, one was a graphic novel, two of these were library books, three of these I read physically this month. Uh, five of these are new releases, three of these are owl crates, and then six of these books, I don't know why I put five up, but six of these books were on my TBR, which is a new category for me because I just love seeing how many books I read from my actual TBR that I told you guys about. Um, well, I don't think I posted a TBR for March, sorry about that. Uh, I'm hoping to post one for April, even though I have a big ambitious spring TBR. So some of the books you saw in my spring TBR, which in case you missed that, I'll put that up above and um, just go check that out. Um, I also posted a March book call recently, so I'll leave that up above as well or down below in the description. Anyways, continuing on with the stats. I read 5,025 pages, um, that was a lot of books between the 12 books. And then my smallest book was Dryfoot, a graphic novel who I forgot about that I read this month and I forgot who the author is. And it was also an arc, so we had that there. And then my biggest book was this guy right here. A Crystal of Time, The School for Good and Evil, book five. This is the fifth installment. I'm so excited to read book six. I just got this book in paper, book six in paperback recently. So I'll be showing that off in my April TBR. So really excited to finish off this series and see how I feel about it. Um, I'll talk more about my thoughts and feelings on this one when we get to it. So that is my reading stats. I'm going to go a little bit out of order right now, but... I can do what I want in my channel. Um, so I'm current, I want to show you my current read. I am currently reading slash listening to Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. This is uh, Elizabeth Lim's debut novel, I believe it was, when it came back, when it came out back in like 2018, 2019. I can't remember what year it came out exactly, but it's been on my shelf for quite a while. And I've been having this book recommend to me multiple times even more recently now now that the new animated not animated uh but the new live version of mulan has been out people know i like mulan so they said i would like this i hear this is project one ray meets mulan and i know Haley from Haley and bookland recently read this book and she really enjoyed it and we have similar reading tastes in this in between us um and so far I'm really enjoying it. It's definitely slow in the beginning, but I'm like 14 chapters into it and I'm really loving it. Uh, I gasped like twice already and I'm only like 14 chapters in. So I'm kind of nervous to see how this book ends. Um, I got this book from Owl Crate when the year came out. So thank you Owl Crate for this awesome edition of the book. And if I do like this one a whole lot, like I think I am, I will definitely buy the sequels sometime soon. So this is what I'm currently reading. And now we're going to jump into the books that I've actually read this month. And I'm going to give you some of my thoughts real quick. Uh, the first book I read was the book club pick for Queer Reads um, pick for March. That was hard to say. And that is The Daughter in Smoke and Bone 
by Lainey Taylor or you could have read the whole entire trilogy which I forgot to grab my whole set which is over on that shelf right off the camera there. Um, I only reread book one this month but I know a lot of people have either continue on with the trilogy or they completed it. Um, we're going to have a book discussion on this for Instagram live show sometime soon. I don't know when but hopefully we can discuss this because I would actually love to have a discussion with this with some, anyone in the comments or just in general because there was a lot to unpack here. Um, this book is 10 years old now which is crazy because I read this my freshman year of high school I want to say and I read all three of them back to back and now I'm kind of spacing them out because I know I will read these books very very fast. Um, I don't think this is Lainey Taylor's debut novel but if it is then that's crazy because her writing in here is just beautiful. Um, there are short chapters in here, there's romance in here which I love and uh, enemies to lover romance which was in here. There was also which I never realized until Charlie pointed this out. Uh, they said that this is a little bit of a take on Romeo and Juliet just because there was like a lot of gang in here and there was just like a lot of similarities between Romeo and Juliet so I'm really excited to see how everyone thinks about that little like small aspect that I didn't even pick up. Um, I remember physically reading these the first time I had them and then I listened to them via audiobook the second time around and man I missed out on great audiobooks. I really enjoyed the narrator for this. I forgot who they, who narrated it but I'll leave them down below. Um, but yeah overall I really enjoyed this. This is a five star read for me this month but it's not going on my favorite list of 2021 for the end of the year list because it's a reread for me. So yeah, Daughter and Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor was the first book I read in the month of March. And then like I said, I read Dry Foot, a graphic novel that I completely forgot what it was about. So if that tells you anything, it's probably, I gave it three stars just to be nice, but it's probably like a two stars, oops. Um, but yeah, I did hit a little bit of a reading slump after rereading Daughter and Smoke and Bone. So the next book I read though was a five star read and I'm sad that I don't own a copy of this but I'm hoping I will soon and that is As Far As You Take Me by Phil Stamford. Um, this is the same author who wrote The Gravity of Us which came out last year. That was his debut novel and now he has a second novel out As Far As You Take Me which came out back in February but I picked it up in March because that's usually how it goes with new releases and I really enjoyed it. The narrators, there was one narrator for this one and he reads a lot of like Becky Albatelli's books, he reads a lot of Adam Severo books so I really knew his voice just from all those other authors but from knowing me and recognizing the voice it was kind of hard to keep track of what books he was narrating and I kind of got lost a few places here and there. Um, as far as you take me I wish I can show covers off on my like phone but I'm using my phone phone to record um, but as far as you take me was following our main character who moves from Texas all the way to London to go to this abroad school he meets this random dude in the airport and he's a bit older so I didn't really like that part of the book um, there was a toxic relationship in here they talked about um, eating disorders as well and I just felt like the relationship I, although it was a cute relationship, it was very rushed and fast type of relationship. So that part of the book I didn't really like. Um, the main character was kind of annoying at some parts. So even though I gave it five stars, I just was like reading it so quickly and was enjoying it for what it was. And yeah, I'm just so happy that I read it. And it's now a new like LGBT contemporary book that I love and will totally recommend to you guys. Um, next book I read, I wanted to reread another one of my favorite books um, in March. And I actually buddy read this with my friend Taylor. And that was Graceling by Kirsten Cashore. This is the first book in the Graceling Realm series. Um, these covers have got changed multiple times. Um, the, this is the like original covers right here for Fire and Bit of Blue, which is the second and third book in this series. It was a trilogy, but the author added a fourth book to this series called Winter Keep, and I'm really excited for that. I remember reading 
one through t one through three wow what is t one through three back in like middle my middle school years and high school um more high school than middle school though and i remember just also flying through this one and i loved physically reading it and man again with like just like with donner's monkey bone i missed out on such great audiobooks this audiobook was full cast narrated was a full cast narrated um so that was really fun to read or to listen to while reading um it definitely brought the story to life and uh there was a lot of like different characters in here our main character casta it was so snarky she was sarcastic most of the time she was funny she's able to kill a man with her bare hands um and Graceling is kind of like a hard fantasy book to describe what it's about um but Casta is one of these few people who has this special ability to just like know what you're doing and saying and so yeah she's kind of like a trained assassin as well so there's like assassin training going on um there's a cool fight scene towards the end of this book that I really really enjoyed um, I remember stopping in the middle of my audiobook for my karate class and I was like, I just want to read my book. Um, and I did finish it the night of that karate class. So I finished this in like almost two or three days it was. And then I waited till my friend Taylor was finished with it and she finished it. She really enjoyed it. So I'm so excited to continue on with my reread of this, but also Taylor read this for the first time and she gave it four stars. So that's pretty a high rating from someone who's reading it for the first time. Um, yeah, I definitely can't wait to continue on with this series as well. Um, again, even though this is a reread and even though this is a five star read for me, I'm not counting it to, I'm not making it a favorite books of 2021 for me just because it is a reread. So although it is a five star read and although I did enjoy it, it's definitely not like a favorite for the year for me, if that makes any sense. Um, but yeah, if you definitely want a good audiobook to listen to, full cast audiobooks are just amazing. But this one to me was like the standout of this month if I should pick a favorite book. Um, but yeah, really enjoyed this and I'm hoping you guys will pick this book series up because I know I convinced my friend Lori to pick up this book. So yeah, super excited to continue on with this series and hopefully I will love the rest of them like I did back in high school. Um, next book I read was The Thief by Megan Willen Turner. This book was also recommended to me a whole lot this past year. Um, it's super short as you can tell. I read this for the backlist readathon. So the rest of these books were read for readathons. I participated in the backlist readathon. I participated in Tone Topple, Owl Readathon. And I think that's the only one I did. Yeah. <laughs> and then so this was on my uh, TBR for the backlist readathon. It was for to read a book that was published before 2007 and this one was published in 2005 I think or something like that which is crazy of how long it's been since this book's been out and I just now discovered this small book. Um, I really enjoyed this. Again this audio I listened to this via audiobook while following along with the story. Um, it was kind of boring to be honest um i don't see where the hype is for this book yet maybe i need to continue on with book two um i almost bought book two recently as well so i'm kind of glad i didn't because i'm unsure if i want to continue with this series or just leave it as it is um the thief follows our main character named jen and he gets captured he escapes this king prison and nobody can like escape the prison before if you do you get caught and killed and whatnot um and but i'm just gonna read the back because that's what sold me it says i can steal anything after jen's bragging land lands him in the king's prison the chances of escape look slim then the king's scholars the magnus the mages sorry i forgot how they said it in the audiobook needs the thief skills for a simply a seemingly impossible task to steal a hidden treasure from the from another land to the mages uh jen is just a tool but jen is a trickster and a survivor with a plan of his own 
dun 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 and i believe the sixth and final book just came out this past this summer so i'm so excited to not only get them in my hands soon but definitely to binge read the rest of the series so this was like a three-star read to me despite it being narrated by one of my narr favorite narrators and that was steve west um so yeah i sadly was kind of disappointed by this but we'll see if i continue on with the series or not um next book i read was the truth project i forgot who this author was as well i'm so sorry uh this book was a library book that i read and returned i actually physically read this because it was written in verse um this follows two main characters i forgot their names because i don't have a physical copy of the book but the truth project there was this school project that this teacher assigned and they are two best friends and one of the friends lied to the other friend that they're not going to be their partners for this project that their teacher wants them to so you can tell what's going to happen from there there was a romance involved there was kind of a cheating scandal in here for a YA book um this is a YA contemporary that I will kind of not really remember like f for the rest of the year it was meh I gave it three stars as you can tell my like whole month is just like three stars or four stars um but yeah that one was just meh it has a pretty cover though so that has it for it um the next book i read was my biggest book of the month like we just said in the beginning and that was a crystal of time by simone chanier like i said this is the fifth installment of the school for good and evil series which is now being adapted to a tv show or a movie for netflix um, so I'm so excited for that. I love the series. Polly Lee is a narrator for this and she just really does a good, good job of narrating uh, this whole series. She's been the main narrator for all of these books. Can you really hear them? <laughs> um, and so I can't really talk much about this one, but this one definitely feels more YA than a middle grade because th this is kind of like a spin-off series to the school and for good and evil series so it's kind of really hard to discuss about sequels especially when it's so close to the end of the series but I did felt like the chapters were a bit long for this book and maybe that's why I got in a mini slump this month um the characters in here was amazing we saw everyone that we loved we said goodbye to a few characters that we loved um and the ending i was dying at the end because i want to know what will happen in book six and i own book six now so hopefully i will uh read that in the month of april the next book i read this month was the gilded ones by naomi forna um this one was a really great debut novel this is a ya fantasies uh first book in a series a debut novel can you tell it's been a while since i filmed um this one i kind of buddy i said kind of because we read it at i read this after she read it so it's not really a buddy read but it was nice to have someone to talk to but i kind of buddy read this with my friend lori she read this first she was reading this first for owl Cratathon. i believe i read what was it three books for Owl Crate-a-thon which is not bad because I wanted to get more of my Owl Crate books off my shelf um and this one is probably no there's one more this is probably like my favorite out of the three that I read um this one it says are we girls or are we demons are we going to die or are we going to survive and it says outcast by bloods warrior by choice um so that with that like quote it's meaning like there was this like ceremony for this village and our main character was trying to go to the ceremony and try to get this certain type of color of blood that they need it was quite interesting um there was a lot of fighting scenes in here that was really interesting uh the characters in here was interesting the whole world was a whole new world to me so i really I keep saying this but I really enjoyed it and I kind of suck at saying why I enjoy a book so much but this one was definitely one of the like books that I enjoyed this month out of all the ones I read um so yeah I really enjoyed this I give this one four stars and 
on to the next book that I read. You guys will be so excited for me. I finally read this book after hosting a read along for this. And I felt so bad that I, I'm a host for this read along. And I just now read this book in March when I was supposed to read this back in November. And that was A Reaper at the Gates by Saba Tahir. This is the third installment of the Ember Quartet series. I have one more book to finish and I'm scared because after this ending, whew, that's all I'm going to say. That's all I want to say for this book. If you guys don't know what the Ember and the Ashes series is, I don't know where you've been the last like four or five years. I love the series and this one is definitely my favorite by far and I give this one five stars. So this is a new to me book so it's definitely a favorite of the month and it's definitely a favorite of the year for me as well. So really happy I read this one and that little cliffhanger I don't know how you guys waited out like two, two or three years for the finale but I'm reading the finale in the month of April spoiler alert so hopefully I'll complete the series sometime soon. Um, the next book I read was a new release that came out I want to say February or January and that was Brightly Woven Alex by Alexandra Bracken. This is the graphic novel version. Um, I put this in a reading vlog that you guys won't see because I didn't like how the re that reading vlog turned out but I read this in two days and it was really cute. It was a it was a, supposed to be Alexandra uh, Bracken's debut novel actually but it never got like very popular or it never got picked up from publishing companies so Disney Hyperion decided to make it a graphic novel and I'm so glad they did because I love reading graphic novels um, and I say that every time because it's true I do it's so fast so quick um, the artwork in here was really amazing here's some of the artwork without spoiling you guys um, this was like, like I said, a short graphic novel and it's the standalone novel too and it just says, the back just says, extraordinary things just don't happen to 14 year old Sadil Merville, a talented weaver who dreams about life outside her tiny village. But that all changes when a mysterious young wizard named Waylon North appeals and asks for Sadil's help. He got a shocking secret that could stop a war between the kingdom if he can reach the capital with the news in time. He needs a navigator who mends his magical cloaks and so deal is perfect for the job. So yeah, if that first paragraph intrigues you, definitely check this book out. This one was like a three star for me just because it was cute, it was fun, was it a favorite? Sadly not, but I do love Alex writing in here. Another book I read this month was by Alexandra Bracken and I finally read Lore by Alexandra Bracken. I was really anticipating this one. I gave this one four stars. It wasn't quite a five star read but it was definitely one that I will like recommend to everyone for a good Greek mythology book. Um, this is like I just said is inspired by Greek mythology. Um, and this one it had like another like competition aspect to it. It had like so many Greek gods that we would know. Athena, um, who else? I forgot who else. Oh my goodness. Oh well, I forgot who else the other gods were. But we had like any of the gods you know will be featured in this book. This is a, another YA standalone fantasy novel. So although it kind of ended like there could be a sequel, but I don't know if there will be a sequel to this or not. But I remember Buddy reading this. I believe. It was with, yeah, I buddy read this with my friend Heather. There was so many buddy reads that I did this month that I can't remember, but I buddy read this with my friend Heather and I remember just staying up super late during one of my friend's reading sprints and I stayed up super late past my bedtime finishing this book and man, what an ending it was. It was so great. There was kind of romance in here that I saw coming and I enjoyed the characters. Lore was yet another funny and witty character and she's definitely someone you don't want to mess with and I just enjoyed the whole entire story even though it was kind of a bit long for my taste but at the end of the day I really enjoyed this and I gave this four out of five stars. 
And then the second to final book I read this month was one of my last books for Owl create a and that was Incendinary by Zadoria Cagavio. This one was a pretty interesting story. I really can't describe what this book is about to be honest. I really enjoyed this. I give this one three and a half out of five stars. It was kind of, again kind of long um, and it also kind of slow in the beginning just because this is the first book in the new fantasy series. Book two comes out in May and with the way this ended I totally want to read book two. At first I was like yeah I'm anticipating book two just because I own book one but now that I read it this month I really enjoyed it. Like even though it was 3.5 stars I might bump it up to like a four star so this is a four out of five stars i listened to this one via audiobook too so the audio narrator was amazing uh she brought the characters and the world to life and there was some funny moments in this book too between the main character and love entrance and this was like my first book by zadoria cadavio in a while because i read labyrinth, labyrinth lost when that first came out and I haven't read a book by her since so I'm definitely eagerly anticipating book two which I believe comes out in May or it comes out in June I can't remember when it comes out but it comes out sometime soon so I don't have that much longer to wait but again with this book how did you guys wait it a whole year or two for the sequel I don't know how you guys did that and again this cover looks different from the original because this was an Owl Crate exclusive that I read and I think we got this last year if I remember correctly so it's only been on my TBR for like a year and then finally having it off my TBR so yay um and then the final book that I have read was the final book in the Curse Breakers trilogy and that was about of Bold and Deadly this one was such a letdown I was so disappointed by this um, I also pre-ordered this book this month, I think. No, 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 I didn't pre-order. I pre-ordered, or I bought this book in January when there was a sale happening, like the buy two, get the third free or something like that. So I bought it, I read it. I'm really happy I read it because now I completed the series, but now it's like off my TBR. So I don't have to worry about this book. Um, this one was such a letdown. Like if I had to choose my favorite book of the month, it would definitely be Reaper at the Gates, and if I had to choose my least favorite, I hate to say it, but it would sadly be A Vow So Bold and Deadly. Um, like I just said, this is the third and final book in the trilogy, and again, I suck at summaries, so I can't really say why I like this, because if I do, I would just spoil the whole entire uh, series for you. Um, but the first book is a is following A Curse of Dark and Lonely is the first book, and that was a Beauty and the Beast retelling, and that follows our main character named Harper who is just a normal girl in DC and there's this new random like stranger that she meets on the street but that random stranger is the prince of Emberfall which is this whole like fantasy world that nobody knows about in DC. It kind of reminded me a little bit of Shadowhunters uh, where you can see the people but didn't realize there was a whole new world right up below your actual city if that makes any sense. And it was, I didn't really like book two, so maybe that's why I didn't really enjoy book three either. Um, but it was a nice series, and will it be one that I recommend? Probably not. Um, I kind of wish I just read book one and not continue with the rest, but oh well. Um, so yeah, this was a three out of five stars. I hate to end a video on a, a disappointing note, but yeah. Can't really talk much about this unless you want to be spoiled for this whole trilogy, so yeah. So there you have it, you guys. Those are the 12, 12, 13 books I read this month. Um, if you read any of these books, let me know down below and I would love to chat with you. Anything bookish down below. Uh, let me know what your guys' favorite book was and least favorite book of March was. Mine, like I just said, was The Battle of Bold and Nedley and my favorite was um, A Reaper at the Gate. So, definitely curious of what you guys have read this month have you read any of the same books that we I have um let me know just how you are in general all right guys I'll talk to you guys later down in the comments below while you're down in the comments and don't forget to hit that like button hit the subscribe button and I'll chat with you guys later bye